Hello everyone. Today we have Suraj D. All India Rank 197 UPSC Civil Service Exam 2022. Uh, on behalf of all of you, I welcome uh, Mr. Suraj for this session. Thank you, sir. Hi, Suraj. Hello, sir. Congratulations for the success. Thank you very much, sir. I would like to congratulate and also like uh, uh, give the gratitude of Shankarai's Academy uh, you, for being here actually in spite of your uh, schedule because already you are in IRS. So like uh, this conversation will be like uh, how you started your preparation yes, and uh, how did you prepare for this exam and uh, throughout the journey what are all the difficulties you faced, how did you motivate yourself in this preparation because this preparation is a very lengthy journey. True. So we will have a small discussion about this that sure, will sir. be fruitful to all the millions of students who are preparing for this exam. Sure, yeah. So first uh, I would like to know about your educational background and about your parents and all. Yes, Can you please tell about that? Definitely sir. Uh, sir, my father V.S. Dilip Kumar uh, worked as an administrative officer in the Karnataka State Police Department. He is now retired from service. And my mother works in the Central Public Works Department as a senior craft person. So right from my childhood, I had this background of uh, government servants in my family. So that always motivated me to join the government service. But then why civil services or why IAS or IPS is a question which comes to my mind also very frequently. Uh, during my childhood, when I used to ponder about what profession I, I, I would choose, my father used to say you have to become an IAS or an IPS officer. Because my father had worked very closely with many senior IPS officers like Director General of Police Karnataka State, Commissioner of Police Bangalore City. So he wanted me also to become one of them, serve the people and in, in fact act in a way that the problems of the people in the society reduce after a point of time. So that always motivated me and uh, coming to my educational background, I have done my Bachelor's of Engineering in computer science and uh, engineering from Global Academy of Technology, Bangalore. Uh, post that in 2017, once I completed my engineering, I started preparing for the civil services exam. And the academy I chose at that point of time was Shankar AS Academy. And it was the first year that Shankar AS had come to Bangalore. And I was very fortunate to be one of those students in the first batch. And today it's almost uh, like a homecoming to me after getting selected for the second time in the exam. So it feels very nice to be interacting with you as well as you have also been an integral part of my preparation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So you were telling that from childhood days you are having the dream of joining civil services. Yes. So you started the preparation after completing your uh, college, no? yes, like sir. after coming out of your engineering. Yes, sir. Uh, did you actually did something at your college time itself so that it, it, it was helpful for you in the preparation after the college? Sir, uh, though I had civil services in my mind, I was not sure as to when I would actually start my preparation. But then in the meanwhile, I had few personal incidents which actually motivated me. Uh, the first one is uh, we, when we had gone to Kodai Canal as a family trip when we were coming back, we actually met with a very serious accident. And then my sister was very severely injured in that accident uh, in the Teni district. So at that point, we received a lot of help from policemen, the district administration. And you know, at that point, I started feeling that these people have been able to help my family. If I am also in one of these positions tomorrow, I will be able to help so many people who are in need. So that actually motivated me to be either in the police service or in the administrative service. And one more incident was uh, when I was in my third year of engineering. Though I was not seriously interested in civil services preparation at that time, my father was working uh, under uh, Kuldeep Kumar Jain Sahib, who is uh, an IPS officer of Karnataka Cadre. And uh, it so happened that I met him in his office and he actually motivated me at that point to write the civil services exam. So that thought of civil services exam was there in me, but he ignited that flame at that point, which has actually come this far. That's great. That's great. So like, uh, like, because like nowadays, like students wanted immediate results, you know, yes. because you, UPSC civil service exam needs at least two years of preparation. True, sir. So it is very difficult for many of the students to sustain their motivation mm -hmm. for the two years, you know, True, because one year of preparation and one year the exam itself happens. True. So it may take one, one, two years or three years or whatever it is, depending upon their attempts. So how you maintain your motivation for these many years in this preparation? Okay, like uh, which help you to actually keep the uh, motivation on uh, throughout the preparation? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, one thing is that I've uh, gotten to, uh, I'll be getting into the Indian Police Service in my fourth attempt. So in my first attempt, I did not even clear the preliminary examination. In my second attempt, I did not clear the mains examination. That was in the year 2020, early 2020, when the mains results were announced. And at that time, the COVID-19 pandemic had hit the entire world. So because of COVID-19 pandemic, I got that extra period of three to four months to prepare for the exam, which was a game changer. Mm -hmm. And I was actually able to cover my weaknesses in mains examination because in prelims I was actually doing pretty well in most of my attempts. 
but then what changed in my preparation phase because i would like to say this to all the aspirants as well because in this process of preparation for the examination there are going to be a lot of crests and tufts mm-hmm. it is not going to be an even surface or it is not going to be a level playing field you will have to manage all the pressure all the pulls with your mental attitude with a positive behavior which will actually help you in the exam this is what i did because i received a lot of help from my parents from the academy and these things actually change a lot whenever i you know we used to feel low i used to talk to my parents they used to give me motivation and then all these things used to add to my potential and then i started believing in myself that i will be able to clear this examination at some point and so i started preparation focusing mainly on my weaknesses mm-hmm. so in my first attempt i did not clear prelims in my second attempt i did not clear means so this actually gave me an input as to where i have to do right what i had done wrong in my last two attempts so i started improving upon my weaknesses which has probably resulted in my selection in the third attempt and also my fourth attempt that's great that's great so in upsc examination choosing an optional is a very important aspect actually yes like what was your optional how did you choose that optional yes. please explain about that sure sir so definitely many people you know go with trends because i have seen that right from my preparation days people say if mathematics optional is scoring well this year or public administration is doing well they just go with the optional thinking that they will also get good marks but that is not the strategy here i chose geography optional in 2017 when it was not at all doing good when average scores were not even 220 when other options were doing 280 300 so my only focus why i chose geography optional was that subject i was comfortable uh, the you have to first look into the syllabus in the upsc website whether you are actually comfortable with that subject and you know in fact contact some of the seniors who have already written that subject contact teachers so that they'll be able to give you a view as to how you have to prepare for that subject whether you actually suit that subject and then start your preparation because optional paper marks an important stage in your preparation especially in the mains exam because you will be writing for 500 marks and if you are able to score more than 280 there are high chances of you getting selected so in that sense i did not bother about the trends at all though you know in my first mains i did not get a very good score in geography i just continued with the same optional because i had the feeling that there was a lot more improvement from my side which could happen so if you do that self improvement any optional you choose you will definitely score good marks so there is also a trend that like students keep on changing their optional that is not advisable right because yes, like yes. like once you stick on to your optional you need to do a lot of improvements in it yes, either changing from one optional to other where you will be a beginner again true sir so like yes what i what you suggested will be helping a lot of students who are actually watching this video yes sir so coming to the answer writing for gs you know, yes, like sir. gs is actually the more chunk of mark is actually with the gs in case yes, uh, like essay and the four gs papers you have 1250 marks in the mains exam yes, which will play a very crucial role in getting into the service because two times you have cleared this examination and yes, you improved a lot of marks in the uh, the present uh, attempt of 2022 also you have improved yes, a lot of mark in gs yes, so sir. what did you do to actually improve the uh, marks and like how this answer writing is very important for scoring a very good marks in uh, mains examination can you please elaborate on it definitely sir yes sir uh, right from the time i cleared the preliminary examination in 2019 uh, i was at that time not very sure as to how a very good answer has to be but then i did not bother too much about it because i knew that i would be joining shankar is given the fact that i was guided by this academy right from my preparation days i just used to go with shankar is mains test series that means toming and especially in the last attempt i went with the uh, mainstreaming legends test series which is very helpful in the fact that uh, the kind of quality of questions they frame because answer writing as sir mentioned forms a major role in a person getting selected or not getting selected and when you choose a good institute like shankar is academy they give you those good set of questions which can actually replicate in the examination and also when you make a lot of mistakes when you write the answers those mistakes will actually be rectified by the mentors and when we go into the depth of the analysis or the kind of solution which they are given it adds a lot of points to our answers as well mm-hmm. in that sense answer writing plays a major role and one thing i would suggest to the aspirants is right from day one of their preparation they have to start focusing on answer writing mm-hmm. because even in my selection this year though my interview marks are not very good uh, my selection and my rank 197 is because of the score in mains examination mm-hmm. so if you have a very good score in mains examination irrespective of your interview score you will definitely get into the rank list and you will have a good rank So I would suggest choose a very good test series, get good guidance from the mentors, and improve upon your weaknesses. Say, for example, you are writing for two fifty marks in three hours. Initially, you will be writing only sixteen uh, questions because you won't be able to complete the entire paper. Doesn't matter. Every test you write, you have to make an improvement. You have to do that self analysis. That now I am writing sixteen answers. Next test, I'll write seventeen answers. If you are writing all the twenty answers, just try to make that half a mark improvement in each question so that your marks in GS will increase by forty at least. 
because 20 questions into 0.5, 10 marks in each paper, so, so 40 marks will be a difference. big difference. Yes, yes, yes. That's great. So coming to the prelims part, you know, like nowadays prelims is becoming very dicey. Yes. You know, like uh, like the question paper is becoming more tougher year on year, and the factor of uh, CSAT is also playing a major role yes, uh, in many of the students uh, clearing the prelims examinations. So what will be your suggestion to the students who are preparing for the prelims uh, next year? Like like what can be done? How the revisions can be done? How many tests they need to take? Or like like how importance they need to give to the CSAT paper? Can you yes, please sir. tell about? Definitely, sir. yes, yes. Sir, I have also written uh, four preliminary papers, uh, out of which there were many difficult papers, especially with respect to CSAT. Uh, but then, with the kind of practice I had, I never felt CSAT was a difficult thing. But then, observing the trend in the last few years' question papers, I feel they are making CSAT a detrimental factor or a deciding factor in the examination process. Mm -hmm. So, one thing I would suggest is, especially with respect to prelims exam, if you consider the entire UPSC journey as a marathon, mm -hmm. this prelims is like a 2020 match. It is not that all balls are yorkers or all balls are bouncers. Mm -hmm. You have to look for those loose balls and hit boundaries in those balls. That's you can't wait for the loose balls all the time or you can't expect yorkers to be there all the time. You have to make use of the gaps, be good in your basics, read as many times as possible the same source. Don't go with multiple sources. Choose a test series or maximum two preliminary test series. Solve the test series papers diligently. Analyze your mistakes and most importantly, this is what most people don't do because I have seen that in my preparation phase as well. Most people what they do is once they finish the preliminary exam paper, in case they are getting 150 marks, they feel they know everything. Mm -hmm. But that is not the case. Mm -hmm. They have to go through the solution of each question in detail because there will be a lot of information in that solution part. Yes. That yes. will act as a good guide to answer the other questions which can appear in the examination. Mm -hmm. So they have to go through the uh, standard books first solve a lot of questions doesn't matter how difficult the paper is don't bother about what kind of questions upsc is setting or don't try to predict it as well just go with your normal strategy of preparing from standard books revising the standard books multiple times going with a good test series and revising the questions which are given in the test series and also the solutions that will give you an edge along with that you will have to practice few previous year question papers as well at least the last five years because you know the language which upsc is using you will be able to predict what kind of statements can actually come in the exam. Doesn't matter because I've seen this year's preliminary question paper as well. Though it seems to be very tough, if you are actually calm and if you apply your mind, you'll still be able to get around 100 marks easily. This is my personal opinion. So don't worry at all in the examination hall, even if you feel the paper is difficult. Just be calm, be confident and eliminate the wrong options which are present in the statements. This will easily give you the marks and you will easily qualify in the exam. Okay, so the presence of mind in the two hours is very important. Definitely, you know? and the revision plays a major role. Major role. Okay, because like people keep on studying a lot of books, tons and tons of books, but they don't revise anything. True. That doesn't make any sense. True, sir. And being very restless in the exam hall is also it is not going to give them fruits. Definitely, so you need to be having a calm mind and also the presence of mind. Yes, that's sir. great. Actually, like from the starting, you are associated with Shankar as a cat. Yes, from sir. your uh, foundation, GSP SIM course, then prelims series, mainstay series, yes, sir. optional, everything you have been associated. So there are some students who actually uh, like prepare for prelims first, then mains again, then uh, mold their mold their like personalities for the personality test or yes, whatever sir. it is. So what we understand is that it's a holistic process. Yes, sir. Okay, starting from the prelims to the interview, yes, it is a holistic process. So can you suggest something how they can actually holistically prepare for this entire examinations? Yes, Not like only clearing prelims or only clearing mains, and overall they need to be in a very good rank in the final list. Yes, so how they can mold themselves for that? Definitely, sir. Yeah. sir, in fact, if I can take my own example, in my first uh, year of preparation, I, in fact, even I focused only on prelims. Mm -hmm. uh, the moment you start focusing on a particular stage in the examination, you will be wasting a lot of time. Mm -hmm. That is because the preparation will not be holistic, it will not be complete. Mm -hmm. And what a specific aspirant has to do during his preparation phases. Mm -hmm. See, for suppose I am an aspirant today, I am aspiring to register civil services exam and getting selected very next year because I don't want to waste much time. Mm -hmm. I am studying a topic from Indian Geography, Drainage System. I am studying in uh, Modern Indian History, what has happened from 1857 till 1947. I go through the content from uh, Bipin Chandra or I go through the Modern Spectrum book. I go through the NCRT. What I have to do is, based on the content which I have already studied, I have to solve questions from the previous year papers or take a particular institute's section wise papers or full length papers, take questions from that, solve them. Doesn't matter even if you don't know the complete content. Because you can't wait in this examination to have the entire knowledge and then start writing answers or start following questions. So the thing is, once you have one single reading or two readings, 
you have to start solving preliminary questions you will have to start writing main answers mm. only when you start writing answers you will actually you know where you are writing mm. and how much time you are taking to actually write a 10 marker a 15 marker and a 20 marker mm. this actually makes a difference doesn't matter even if you don't know the complete content mm. just start practicing within the stipulated time limits focus on content and focus on how well you can actually present the answer because presentation also plays a major role yes, in means yes, preparation yes, yes. along with the content you will have to use figures diagrams data all these things actually play a major role in presentation and with constant answer writing practice that is a minimum of 2 to 3 questions every day you will have to write and this examination according to me is all about discipline if you are honest and disciplined if you are preparing for 8 hours or any number of hours every day consistently there is no one who can stop you from succeeding in this exam that's great the word you use discipline is very important why because you know like the hard work and all these things are actually like complemented by this discipline you are yes. continuously attending the sessions you are taking the test properly yes. definitely at one point of time you will succeed in this life definitely. the word discipline was very uh, like apt word to be used you yes, know sir. like let me put the other question actually like previously before 4 years or 5 years you know the the weightage of the subjects will be actually like more or less it is fixed more yes, weightage sir. will be there for polity in prelims more weightage for modern indian history nowadays it is keep on changing yes, but still no students are actually like omitting certain subjects in their preparation for example yes, the always this gray area subjects are there for example ancient india like or art and culture or something like that but nowadays the questions have increased in these parts yes. so when you go to the exam hall and you see a lot of questions from the areas what you have not prepared you know it is a very big surprise yes. and ultimately you break down there and uh, it is a disaster so like you need to give equal importance to all the subjects in the yes, preparation uh, in the preparation stage yes, tell about that how did you prepare all the subjects how did you give gave weightage to all the subjects equally that will help the students also to come up uh, with good preparation method you know yes definitely sir. yes sir when i started my preparation as well because we go with the bigger subjects which have a major chunk of uh, share in the examination even i used to focus more on polity geography because geography, these yes. had majority of the questions but later in my later that is in my third attempt and my fourth attempt in, especially in the preliminary examination mm -hmm. lot of questions started appearing from art and culture mm -hmm. like you mentioned ancient history mm -hmm. and also from science and technology, science and, technology. and also from uh, sports related areas yes. so what can happen here is if your preparation is not complete or holistic you will have some gaps mm -hmm. so what you have to do is you have to give equal focus equal weightage to all the subjects mm -hmm. doesn't matter how many questions actually appear when it comes to environment because it will have a weightage of around 20 questions in prelims at least mm -hmm. so you have to focus more on those core areas strengthen them see in case you have to focus more on polity mm -hmm. more on geography mm -hmm. in case there are 15 questions in polity you have to make sure that you answer 12 to 13 at least mm -hmm. properly mm -hmm. and even in geography if you are focusing on a particular subject the cost benefit ratio has to be very high mm -hmm. if you are investing time it means that it has to translate into marks as well you are investing more time in polity you are not scoring good in that you are not concentrating at all on ancient history you are getting 15 questions on it you are not able to answer that as well that doesn't look good mm -hmm. so if you give equal amount of weightage for all the subjects and keep this in mind uh, even i used to find ancient uh, and medieval history very difficult what i did was you have to choose a very good source mm -hmm. i chose uh, the tamil nadu class 11 and class 12 books mm -hmm. because the language is very simple the content is also very comprehensive i was able to cover it in a very short period of time mm -hmm. and revise it mm -hmm. so that actually gave me confidence that the subject is not difficult mm -hmm. so you have to find those you know narrow gaps you know those narrow roads which can actually lead to success mm -hmm. and then you have to practice more questions on it mm -hmm. because uh, the academy and all the other academies are offering a lot of test series specifically on these subjects mm -hmm. so when you solve more questions on it see what kind of questions are appearing in previous year papers mm -hmm. it will give very good insights and don't have that thought in mind because even in mains exam mm -hmm. sir as you know i even you have written multiple mains exams mm -hmm. there are so many questions which are bouncers which no yes, one yes, know that yes 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 in this exam is all about managing what you don't know and obviously that is what is expected as an ias or ips officer yes, also right yes it's almost about managing because out of 20 questions even in mains exam i would say perfectly i would not well or 13 mm -hmm. of the another 6 or 7 i just have a peri peri knowledge mm -hmm. but because i have this knowledge i know how to apply it in that particular situation though i do not have complete information mm -hmm. i know how to manage it well and get 50% of the marks mm -hmm. managing actually plays a way, major role even in preliminary examination doesn't matter see for example you can give me any random question mm -hmm. i won't know anything about it but i'll easily eliminate two wrong options and decide between the two close options mm -hmm. so this is the kind of logic you have to use in the examination mm -hmm. this plays a important role important role 
So two things I have understood from this. First thing is choosing the right material. Yes. Sir. The second thing is, uh, thing is actually practicing more on the questions. Yes, sir. Because like you see a lot of bouncer question in the test in the class test itself, you'll be able to manage it very perfectly yes, in sir. the final examination. Yes, that's great actually. Like let us come to the interview part. You know, yes, like sir. interview is always a fancy thing in uh, UPSC civil service True, operation. Sir. Even every day when I sit in the office, you know, people or the parents or the students come to me for joining the Shankaraj yes, Academy sir. or want to take some guidance about this exam. Straight away they talk about interview only. They don't yes, talk sir. about the prelims or mains. You know, True, because sir. it is fascinating to go to uh, UPSC civil yes, service sir. interview because millions of students aspire for it. Only mm -hmm. 2,000 to 2,500 students uh, reach the interview stage. True. How was your experience in uh, two two times you have cleared this examination? So how was your experience? With uh, uh, the interview part of the or personality test part of the examination, sir. Uh, interview part I think is one of the easiest mm -hmm. and it is also the toughest part, I would say. Uh -huh. Because the other stages you will have certainty with respect to the kind of preparation you would have done, mm -hmm. especially in the main space. Yes. Whereas when it comes to the preliminary examination, it is kind of very uh, debatable, it is kind of very variable. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to interview, it can be anything. It can be really good, it can be really bad. But the only thing you have to do is you have to focus on your own personality. As the name says personality test, they are not checking your knowledge. It is just what kind of a person you are. Whether you are actually a person who is suited to become an IAS or an IPS officer or any other group A officer. If you have that attitude of emotional intelligence, if you are confident, if your communication skills are good, that is more than enough. But the only thing which is expected from a candidate is they have to be honest and they should not be lying, they should be accepting if they are not aware of something. Mm -hmm. It's not that any person knows everything. Mm -hmm. Obviously, even, even in spite of having around 30 to 35 years of experience, because the panel members will usually be around 60, 65 years yes, old. Yes, yes. They'll be, their experience will be more than our age. Mm -hmm. So, they'll be knowing each and everything about us. Mm -hmm. And even if you are trying to make up for an answer, they'll easily make out that we are actually trying to fake. Mm -hmm. So, it is better to stay what kind of a person we are, mm -hmm. just answer them confidently and come out. But then the kind of experience I have had in interviews is very different. Mm -hmm. The first interview, the kind of questions which were asked were different. But then they made me very confident. They tried to bring the best out of me. Mm -hmm. And that is how I was able to score 195. But whereas in this attempt, uh, because I was already in service, uh, you know, they will have some sort of evaluation procedure, their own methodology as well. The questions were very random. Mm -hmm. So you can't have any expectation about the interview. On the basis of your DAP, they may ask few questions, but in my second interview, mm -hmm. there were no questions from my DAP, mm -hmm. no questions from my educational background or from my home state, my city, mm -hmm. nothing was there. It was just random questions which were thrown at me. Mm -hmm. I just managed them well, I just handled them with confidence. Mm -hmm. Though my interview score was not very good, mm -hmm. but then I had the confidence that I did not crumble under pressure. Mm -hmm. They are looking for people who don't crumble under pressure. Mm -hmm. Because even as an IAS officer, an HPS officer, suddenly some communal raids will happen, mm -hmm. suddenly some natural disaster will happen. Under those situations, whether you will actually be able to apply your mind in a logical way, mm -hmm. whether you will be able to handle the stress, this is what they will be trying to do. Yes, of course. These are all the qualities a civil servant should have. Yes, you know? So, the, the, the crux of what I found from your answer is that whatever might be the situation, you should be able to handle it. Handle it. Yes, Confidently, yes. you have to answer. Yes. You have to be sure of what your thought process is. Mm -hmm. Don't try to adopt some process or some opinion. Mm -hmm. See, for example, people are talking about same-sex marriage in India. Mm -hmm. Lot of uh, opinion articles are coming in the newspaper, a lot of people are debating in news channels as well. You can't just take their opinion and tell that as your opinion. You will have to frame your own opinion about few issues which are there in the international and national stage. Have an opinion about it and give your own opinion because they, UPSC actually gives a lot of weightage to your original opinion. Yes, if you are yes, original yes. in your thoughts, original in your approach, you are bound to do it. That's great, that's great. So obviously in this interview, we know we should not expect anything in the interview. True, sir. We'll go with the open mind true, to actually sir. face the questions and manage the situation as well as uh, possible. You Very know? true. Sir. That's great actually. So the last question would be like, I want you to tell something to the budding aspirants, so, like millions of students are actually preparing for this exam. Yes, sir. So you have succeeded in this exam twice and now yes, you are going to get into Indian police service yes, and sir. soon you are going to serve the people of yes, the nation. Okay, I, I, I wish you to get the home state cadre. Thank you. Sir. Uh, yeah. So give some words, some, some some suggestions to the budding aspirants, like how they can actually mold themselves for this uh, service. Yes. So basically this exam preparation is an integral part of your life, but it is not entirely your life. You have to make sure that you decide on priority what has to be done. Because this examination phase is so, so uh, kind of well packed that you won't have time to think about the other things which are happening in your life. So you have to be very focused. Be very practical about the goals you set because you have to set daily targets, 
monthly weekly targets monthly targets because without having these targets you can't achieve the ultimate goal and from 2017 till 2023 i have spent almost 6 years in preparation and i also got into indian revenue service in 2021 mm-hmm. after 4 years of preparation so according to me this examination tests your patience yes whether yes. you can persevere whether you have the attitude to pursue even in spite of failing mm-hmm. it is actually testing what kind of a person you are even in life life tests us whether we are strong people or whether we are not strong people those people who crumble under pressure can never become great mm-hmm. so actually the stone which actually is you know which actually becomes the lord or which becomes the sculpture would have taken a lot of hits on itself mm-hmm. so in the same way if you have to become a great person if you have to achieve something great you will have to persevere and then you will have to make sure you give all your attempts or in the sense you will have to give your best attempt you have to give all your efforts into it and then expect a good result mm-hmm. without giving good Uh, or without making good efforts you can't expect a good result give everything from your side whatever is possible have faith in god believe in yourself and also make sure that your preparation is on track by keeping yourself in the loop with the mentors with the academies and also with the best kind of preparation which can be possible from your side be hopeful and be positive this is the only thing that which i say all aspirants because right from my preparation phase if i have come this far it is because of the kind of positive attitude with the kind of mindset that i will accept failure if you have to become a successful man you have to be ready to accept yes, failure yes, that is very important actually i have accepted failures many times in my life mm-hmm. and that has actually given me accepting courage, and also like learning from the failures yes, is sir. also very important very true sir and bouncing back with the same energy Definitely, sir. because people who actually do not bounce back after their failure if yes, they go to the very nominal position very very, true, very menial position people who have actually bounced back after their yes, uh, failures and learned many things from the failures are definitely coming up with flying colors definitely sir you are a very good example for that actually thank you yes sir. please please yeah. sir but then this is what i would like to say to all the aspirants doesn't matter if you fail in one prelims doesn't doesn't matter if you fail in one means doesn't matter if you fail in that interview it doesn't matter at all because in this process of life every day is a learning process and everything you do is learning yes so ultimately your goal is to clear the civil services examination have a single minded focus you will definitely be able to achieve it have a positive attitude and keep preparing confidently with good guidance because without good guidance you know that there is light at the end of the tunnel but if you have to know in which direction you have to go to see that light you need some guide and That's you need a good mentor and that mentor actually plays an important role in my life as well a lot of mentors have played a major role and that is why i am here today thank you thank you thank you so this discussion we discussed about various stages of this examination yes, and also how to actually keep the motivation on throughout the examination how to be patient till the success yes, is there like uh, it was a very good conversation it would have thrown a lot of lights for the students who are preparing for this examination first of all i thank you for uh, sparing your time here with shankarai's academy and we are very happy yes. that you have uh, come up with flying colors in this examination thank and all the best for your future for thank serving you. this nation thank and you. we would see you as a very uh, uh, like prominent ips officer in the country and do a lot of good uh, service to the people of this nation yeah, thank okay you. thank you for coming here so thank you very much it was sir. a nice conversation with you i hope the conversation would have helped many students who are watching this video how to prepare for this examination especially with respect to prelims mains and interview on various stages of the examination we have discussed here okay thanks a lot for watching this video thank you